Hello everybody, it's iOS here for another video. Uh, I know it's been a while, sorry about that. Um, anyway, today I'm going to be teaching you about how to use the Octane um, Spotlight. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a scene that we're going to use to sort of uh, go over all the different features of the Spotlight. So um, yeah, I'm going to grab a cube. Um, I'm going to scale it up. Okay, make it a fillet. I'm going to increase the fillet radius. There we go. Gotta make it editable. Grab my um, select tool, increase the radius bit. I'm just gonna like hold shift. Oh wait, we need to disable select as well. And then hold shift and just sort of select everything at the top here. Delete. There we go. I suppose we can delete all that as well. Um, it's like that. We can delete the sides of this as well. We're just sort of making a backdrop right now. A nice white backdrop. Okay. Should be good. We should delete that. Okay. Now we have our backdrop set up here. All right, we're gonna add ourselves a cube. Um, I'm gonna scale it down a bit actually. Grab my scale tool here um, and just sort of click and drag. I don't want it to be huge at all. Just a very small one. There we go. All right. To this cube, I'm gonna add a fillet, make it 12 segments, and decrease the amount, just like that. Just so it's a little, um, not so rigid. I'm gonna create a new material, shader, C4D Octane, Octane Material. I'm gonna make it a material type, metallic, and set the roughness up a bit. There we go. Now we have a scene that we're able to test this on, the, the volumetric light. Okay, there we go. If I start the render here, looks all right. Um, we're going to do path tracing, obviously, because you know it's the nicest. As well as we're going to add a texture environment, which is completely black. Okay, there we go. Now we're actually set up. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Lights, Octane Spotlight. And although it's uh, it, it's very different from a normal light, it functions um, in the same way in, in a lot of respects. So we're going to set it up here. Now the first thing you're going to notice about this um, actually, there's a few things you're going to notice. Number one, it seems like there's a fog volume coming off of it, right? Uh, number two, there are these right here, these squares. And what do those do? Uh, we're going to go over all that uh, right now. So hopping into our um, tag, power, very simple, controls how bright the light is. I think we'll, we'll, we'll try turning that down a bit. We rotate a little. There we go. I'm gonna just move it in so that it's sort of right over the the box here. All right, so going into our thing. All right, power, very self-explanatory. Color, also relatively self-explanatory. So if the color to blue, light turns out blue. We're gonna do a very subtle blue, but, but yeah, just like that. Okay. Now, light medium. So you see how there's kind of a, a little bit of fog here? Um, the light is sort of like emitting a foggy light. Um, kind of see what I mean there? Right, uh, we can control that. So we control the density of it. You know, how thick do we want that to be? Do you want it really thick or do we maybe not want it so thick? Um, volume step length, that's kind of the detail of that. I'm gonna turn that down a bit. Now I'll notice something, there's a lot of white pixels here just sort of sitting around um, and those are called fireflies. Now if you get into your octane settings and set your GI clamp to one, Already, it, it gets rid of most of those uh, very easily. In fact, I think they're all pretty much gone. So yeah, have that there. AI light, very useful if you have that feature. Uh, and parallel sample and nice tile samples will just make it render faster, so that's nice. All right, <clears throat> let's go over um, some more controls. So physically controlling how large it is can be done using this right here. Increases the size uh, horizontally or the radius of it. And this one right here controls how long it is. Don't drag it all the way back, it um, kills the light. Anyway, you know, we want to sort of engulf the cube. Um, just like that. Now, maybe it's a little too thick, so we can actually just lower the thickness and lower the brightness. There we go, looks a little better. Now here's something to note as well. If you go inside of it, uh, it stops working. So if you bring the camera inside of it, um, I'm gonna zoom in here, just kills it, completely stops working. 
So that is definitely something to be aware of that you don't want to bring your camera inside of it because that just kills it. All right, looking pretty nice. <clears throat> now let's have a look at the other feature that this thing has, um, and that is barn doors. Now basically barn doors allow you to control sort of the shape of the light that's coming out of it. So having a look at this, like coming, that's coming out of it, it's evenly distributed um, along the actual like volume here. Scroll down, barn doors. You can see that um, changing the barn door size, first of all, change how big it is, obviously. But if we change the barn door one angle, um, then you can see that it sort of cuts off the light. So it allows it to fall more softly along the side like that, or allows it to fall more softly sort of towards the bottom. Um, similarly, let's look at the top here. Let's say that we wanted it to be, you know, longer, or we wanted it to be more light on the, the left side than the right side. We can do that. Now more light will just sort of fall on the front and give us that sort of effect that, that it's just sort of popping out of the dark. Um, and again, very useful for different sorts of effects. Uh, definitely a valuable feature. Um, thank you, Otoy. Very cool. Uh, yeah, so other than that, it's mostly the same kind of light. Obviously the light medium here, this works just like a volume. You know, if I want to set the scattering, say I wanted some blue scattering, we set it to red. Um, we get blue scattering, we get a red inside of it, right? I'm going to turn that into something more subtle, maybe a little more subtle blue, you know, it'll be blue and scatter orange. Very cool. Uh, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it on the other side and show you how these two lights interact with each other. The effects are pretty much additive, but I, I still think it's appropriate to show how they look together. You can get some really nice effects with these, honestly. Um, all right. So this one right here, we're going to do it at a different angle for the sake of just, you know, making it look a bit nicer or a bit more unique. I don't know. Uh, we're going to angle it like that. Actually, we'll move it back. Okay, just like that. And we're going to change the color of this. So instead, we're going to have the absorption be slightly red. Um, or the average B spectrum, the color be slightly red. Turn up the power a little bit, the light medium, set the scattering to be red as well. Okay, should set it to a little blue here. Now, um, increase the length. Perhaps we should actually decrease the the light medium thickness on both of these. There we go. Now you can see here the effects are um, quite additive. So you can see we have the blue from this one, have the orange from that one, and they're sort of just adding together to make a nice effect here. Of course, you want to make sure that you're on path tracing. Yeah, I think you already talked about that. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's there's pretty much nothing more to cover. Um, they also interact pretty well with other lights. So if you grab a octane light here, the light, you know, we place that as like a top light. I'll decrease the size and stuff in a minute here. There we go. Use it as a top light and decrease the brightness slightly. It all interacts and works. Uh, very well together. So anyway, that's how you use the Octane Spotlights to, you know, do this sort of thing. You can use it for landscapes, you can use it just for this kind of lighting. Um, and the difference between using an Octane Spotlight and a, you know, standard volume and a normal light is the spotlights are way faster and just better in all ways. Um, except, you know, if you go inside of it, it kills the illusion. But, you know, that's fine. It's, um, it, it's really worth it. It's really worth it. Anyway, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all later. Bye.